Egner. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Uh, the need to rebuild Christchurch and Greater Christchurch is urgent, Mr. Locke. We need to do it quickly, we need to do it efficiently. Keith Locke wants to take more time, but circumstances just don't allow it. I have just received news that a major sewer has collapsed on Ferry Road. So another setback that just emphasises how fragile our sewer system is and now more people have got to use chemical toilets and port longer. This just underlines the urgency of how important it is to get Sarah up and running. The managing of the rebuild of Christchurch needs that sort of support. Now, there are two major debating points around this bill. The first is, does the Sarah bill allow enough community participation? And I listened to my colleague Louise Upston, and I would have to say yes. The second is, are there enough checks and balances around the extraordinary powers provided by the Sarah legislation that are needed to deal with these extraordinary situations? I say yes to that as well. This is a balanced and well thought out piece of legislation. It's unique legislation. It's Kiwi style, but it is informed by overseas experience in managing disaster recover, re recovery. And according to the Legislation Advisory Committee, it meets all the tests of the pr principles of disaster recover legislation. It is designed for New Zealand conditions and to get our city and greater Christchurch moving. It does not preclude the recovery work that is already happening, especially in Kaiapoi. But with a dedicated authority in place, there will be a quicker, more efficient process for the communities that still have to begin the rebuild process. We are all very aware that some people have been living in broken houses with damaged infrastructure and in dislocated communities since September 4. Much of our city is munted. There, there are a series of checks and balances in this legislation. And as the New Zealand Law Society says, the bill largely meets the objectives of transparency and accountability. To recap the details, Sarah is working in partnership with existing council, councils and stakeholders. The powers of this legislation can only be used for earthquake recovery within the greater Christchurch area. The Minister is accountable directly to Parliament, and that includes all parties in this Parliament, and must report every three months. And Sarah itself must be reviewed every year. All orders in Council will be reviewed by the review panel, chaired by a ret retired High Court judge. And there are also the advisory committees, a community forum and a cross-party forum. I am sure that both these forums, in true Cantabrian spirit, will be robust and active. And finally, as always in New Zealand, every citizen has the opportunity of free speech to hold the minister and Sarah to account. This is a well-balanced, well-thought-out bill, and I look forward to seeing it coming into legislation. Uh, Honourable Clayton Cosgrove.